Welcome to my channel, Hardware AI. Today we're going to try out the newest addition to the list of the boards officially supported by Edge Impulse platform, Raspberry Pi Pika 2040. I've already made a video on how to train and deploy the machine learning model to our P2040 microcontroller earlier in February 2021. So this is a follow-up of that video. Given the board low cost, low footprint profile and a very decent performance, coupled with Raspberry Pi Foundation top-notch documentation and software support, it is easy to see how it became one of the most popular microcontrollers for people starting out with embedded systems. In February this year, Edge Impulse published a blog article announcing full integration of Raspberry Pi Pika 2040 to Edge Impulse Studio. Quite naturally, I myself had to do something with it. What it means in practice that uh, there is a pre-built firmware available that can be easily flashed to the board for data collection. And then after you train your machine learning model in Edge Impulse Studio, you will be able to download the same firmware, but with your model already integrated uh, to the firmware. And you can use it as is uh, by connecting it to SBC or PC, or alternatively you can download the C++ library or Arduino IDE library and deploy the model with DSP blocks as a standalone project complete with program logic and actuators. There are three pre-configured sensors available for RP2040 firmware. Groove Ultrasonic Ranger on pin 16, DHT11 Temperature and Humidity Sensor on pin 18, and uh, LSM6 DS3 Accelerometer and Gyroscope on i 2 c 0 and also it is possible to sample the analog signal from ping A0. There is a vast variety of analog signal sensors uh, that can take advantage of our P2040 10-bit ADC or analog to digital converter. These sensors range from common ones such as light sensor, sound sensor, to more specialized ones. For example, carbon dioxide sensor, natural gas sensor, or even an EMG detector. And of course, you can use Edge Impulse CLI data forwarder to easily collect the data from any sensor. For this project, what I wanted to try was using latest sensor fusion feature to utilize the data from both temperature and humidity sensor and VOC sensor or volatile organic compounds gas sensor to detect the stove condition in range from idle to active, normal cooking and burning. While researching for this project, I found out that unattended cooking is by far the leading factor of most kitchen fires. In fact, it was the cause of nearly 31% of all home fires and 53% of all cooking related of all cooking fire related deaths between 2014 and 2018 in the US. So it is a big deal and outfitting stove and or kitchen food with a device that can monitor the environment and warn the user if burning is detected is a big deal and it can save lives. 
I am not a chemist myself, I'm a humble software engineer. So I went on to read about the sensors available for this task and Groove VOC module based on WSP2110 sensor seemed like a good fit. VOC stands for Volatile Organic Compound and these are compounds of carbon and these are any compound of carbon, excluding carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, carbonic acid, metallic carbides or carbonates, and ammonium carbonate. There is a lot of volatile organic compounds in smoke, and in particular in the smoke from cooking food. The base level for VOC should be pretty consistent across different kitchens, and if there is a higher level of VOC in the air, it can indicate better ventilation is needed because of things like new furniture, consumer products, and redecorations of indoor surfaces. They can, uh, with the time, uh, keep outputting the volatile organic compounds, and it's actually bad for health. I placed the sensors in the kitchen hood and recorded the data with the stuff idle. Uh, while cooking normally and then let some food uh, such as bread and rice for a long period of time on the stove so it started to burn and emit smoke. I've chosen the flatten block here since it's a relatively slow moving data but exploring other types of DSP blocks might be worthwhile especially if trying to detect the actual start of kitchen fire. There you can see the sudden change going on in uh, sensor readings. The model I trained was good at uh, distinguishing normal cooking from burning, but the transition from cooking to idle, uh, stove turned off but still hot, was hard to determine with just these two sensors in the kitchen hood. As I mentioned above, the simplest option to deploy the model to device after it was trained is download the pre-built firmware. Let's do this. Uh, and uh, see the performance live on the device. So first of all, go to Deployment tab, choose Raspberry Pi RP2040 and press on Build button. Then uh, the firmware that has your impulse will be automatically compiled and downloaded. As the end result, you'll have the zip archive. After that, uh, while pressing a boot select button, connect your RP2040 to computer. And you'll see this new mass storage device. Just drag and drop the firmware. And after that's finished, open your favorite serial monitor uh, application. I'll use Arduino ID and uh, uh, there is no real difference here which uh, application to use but I'm sure that a lot of you have it on your computer. Uh, yeah, so you'll need to use some IT commands. Uh, to know what IT commands are available you can type IT plus help and in this case we are interested in IT plus run impulse command. All right, yeah, this is what we have. This is really that simple. Um, I'm in my room right now. So uh, we definitely getting idle sample as nothing is cooking and nothing is burning in my room, to which I'm very happy. The second option is to download C++ library, copy it over to standalone example, add sensor acquisition code, compile and flash it to Raspberry Pi. That approach is uh, more attractive since the way you can implement your own application logic directly on the microcontroller without the need to output the data somewhere. Let's do that too. So in order to do that, choose the C++ library in deployment tab and then go to build it. It's going to take a really short time because there is no actual compilation. I'm just putting the files together. Okay, and then go extract this zip archive to a folder. 
and what you will see inside is the latest version of Edge Impulse SDK, uh, model parameters, which includes some metadata and the parameters of DSP blocks, and the actual weights of the models of the model. Uh, then what we're going to do, uh, download the uh, example standalone inferencing Pika, just git clone it to some folder. I already have it here. Um, and then just copy and paste the Edge Impulse SDK model parameters and TF Lite model folders to example standalone inference in Pika. Just like that. I already have them here, so I'm not going to do that. I already did that step. Uh, do not copy CMake lists because we actually have one in this repository and it's more relevant to us. So in order to compile the example, you also need to have uh, the uh, uh, Pika SDK variable set. Once you have that, uh, we'll need to make some changes in order to, uh, uh, to actually get the data from sensors and feed it into the neural network. For that, um, go to yeah, GitHub. Uh, for that, you also need to git clone another repository. It's firmware pi rp2040. And from there, you'll need to take uh, third party uh, rp2040 dht11 lib. So you'll just put it into third party folder in your example standalone inference in Pika folder. And we'll need to make some changes to CMake lists and also to main CBP. Uh, you'll be able to find this project in my GitHub. I'll leave the link in the video description. Uh, but just to briefly mention what changes did I make, let's go to this comparison. Um, in CMake lists, I added the hardware GPIO and ADC, which we'll need for uh, for getting the data from sensors, obviously, and I added to include directories third party RP2040 DHT11 lib. I also uh, added this line which recursively finds all CPP files in third party folder, and I added the found files to the source files list. So that's it for CMake lists. Everything else was just there already. And uh, so these are uh, the files for DHT11 lib, including the license and README. Uh, and another change was uh, quite a few changes in main.cpp file. We added some headers, uh, in, in instantiated DHT11 class on pin 18. Here the features buffer is empty and it's the size of EI classifier DSP input frame size. Uh, we have the new function called init sensors which initializes initializes ADC and DHT11 sensors. We call it here inside of main function. And then uh, just before we uh, just before we do all these manipulations with the uh, features and uh, run classifier in them. We call this function raw feature get data, which uh, it's a loop, right? Uh, that does uh, sample sample measurement this many times, uh, and each time it samples uh, the sensors, we do the following: we First, read the data from DHT11 sensor, then we place them into uh, features array, and then we read the data from ADC sensor, which is our VOC uh, guest sensor, and we also place them in features array. Then we sleep uh, until, the, uh, until it's the time for us to read sensor measurement next time. We use our digital signal processing block, in, case, in our case it's flatten, on the raw features and we get the processed features and then we run classifier on these features and we place the 
uh, model inference results into the result uh, structure struct. All right, and then if everything went well, if we do not get any errors, then uh, we just print out our classification results. Um, so let's compile. Okay, let me go to CD. that was uh, example standalone inferencing. So I already have the build a folder here. You'll need to create it. Go to build. We would run CMake. And then just uh, make J4. Okay. Perfect. So in my case, it took just a second because I already had it built. Uh, in your case, it, it will take a slight longer, but not too long. And then, as you did before, exactly the same. Uh, take your picker. And then while pressing boot select button, connect it with the with your computer. Then inside of that build folder, you'll be able to find pika standalone.uf2 file. Drag and drop it to mass storage device. Okay, great. And then again, just use your favorite uh, serial monitor. I'll use Arduino ID because it's simple and a lot of people have it. Okay, perfect. So we are getting the data and getting the classification result in the third class is idle. So we have the highest probability of uh, the data that we're getting right now from DHT11 and guest sensor being classified as idle, be, uh, belonging to the class idle, which is true in our case. In conclusion, let's talk about the way to improve on this project. First of all, if we have chemists in the comment section, what is your opinion on which sensor or the combination of the sensors is the most applicable for this task? Specifically, I'm interested if my guess sensor choice was the right one. Second, as mentioned, other DSP processing blocks might be much more useful if detecting actual kitchen fire, uh, because they would account for sudden changes in data, unlike flattened block, which removes all time related information from the data processing window. And third, despite RP2040 is relatively new cheap, there are already quite a few boards built with it specifically, apart from official Pika board. There are Arduino RP2040 Connect with Wi Fi, Bluetooth, and some onboard sensors. There is Seed Studio Xiao RP2040, extremely small footprint and black Adafruit Feather RP2040 with built-in lithium polymer battery charger. While pre-built edge input firmware is mainly tested with Pika board, it is compatible with other boards, uh, with the exception of uh, I2C uh, bus sensors. Different boards use different pins for I2C, so if you'd like to use the accelerometer and gyroscope, you will need to change I2C pin values in Edge Impulse RP2040 firmware source code and then recompile it and flash it. Other boards might offer more features that are desirable for this project, such as Wi-Fi connection, for example, to, to reporting the data to home automation system that it can warn the user better. Oh, and uh, if repeating these experiments at home, exercise caution. Build them out safely and until the next time.